Does thinking or talking about your wedding budget give you a pit in your stomach? Are you constantly worried about how much this is all going to cost and looking for ways to save as much money as possible? Or maybe you're wondering how on earth your wedding will ever live up to the pictures you're seeing on Instagram and Pinterest. If you're cuddled up with your dog and drinking wine alone, crying because you can't find a photographer for less than $5,000, then today's wedding budget Q&A is just for you. That's all coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Welcome to the Wedding Planning Podcast, where you're about to join thousands of joyful and intentional engaged couples who know that the wedding celebration of their dreams is possible, even if right now things feel a little stressful and overwhelming. If you're newly engaged and wondering where to even begin with your wedding plans, check out our totally free engagement starter kit, where we unlock exactly how to design the wedding that you want, minus the crushing stress, decision fatigue, and overwhelm felt by so many engaged couples. For instant access to this fun and totally free audio bonus series, simply visit allnew.wedding. Enter your first name and email address and check your inbox. Episode one of the Engagement Starter Kit is on the way. That website again is allnew.wedding. That's A-L-L-N-E-W dot wedding. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there. Welcome to today's bonus Q&A episode all about your wedding budget. And thank you so much as always for joining me here today. A humongous congratulations on your engagement. It is an incredible incredible honor to be a part of your planning journey. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for choosing me and the Wedding Planning Podcast to be a part of what you're going to be experiencing over the next coming months. I am extremely excited for you. Today's bonus Q&A all about your wedding budget is part of our 12 weeks of engagement bonus series. And these questions that we're going to review today were submitted by members of my digital wedding planning package, The Vault. And these are in response to the wedding budget workshop episode that went live last week on January 12th. So continuing our conversation all about setting your wedding budget, you are overwhelmed and struggling with your budget if you do any one of the things I mentioned at the top of the episode. And maybe even two to three of those things sounded really familiar. If you get a pit in your stomach even thinking about your wedding budget, let alone talking about it. If you're constantly worried about how much everything's going to cost and looking for ways to save as much money as possible. Or even worse, you're sweeping the whole money convo under the rug and just trying not even to think about it. Maybe you're wondering how on earth your wedding can live up to the pictures that we're bombarded with on social media and big wedding websites. And then, of course, my favorite, if you're drinking wine alone with your dog or your cat, and you're in total despair because everything is just way more expensive than you ever imagined it would be, then you, my friend, are a walking case of budget stress and overwhelm. And we cannot have you going through life these next few months shouldering all of that. This level of anxiety not only creates toxic stress in your daily life that's really bad for your physical health, but it's also going to suck the fun out of your engagement, and it doesn't have to be that way. Yes, obviously, weddings cost money, but by ignoring your financial situation, all you're doing is setting yourselves up to be that couple a year from now who went way over their budget, who had to use wedding gift money to pay off their credit cards, and who, although they might not actually admit this to anyone out loud, who looks back and realizes that in hindsight, there's a whole laundry list of things that were completely unnecessary. I actually have a story about this to share coming up in one of our questions for today later in the show. 
living in a place of overwhelm and judging yourself and your wedding decisions against these staged fake photos and strangers on the internet on social media, that's not serving anyone. And there are some very powerful shifts that I can offer to lift you up to a place where you confront your wedding budget head on. That's the exact conversation we had last week on Wednesday in that wedding budget workshop episode. You have the hard conversations. You've seen in black and white exactly how much money you're working with. You commit to your priorities and then it's done. And that's the point where you can move to a more joyful place where choosing a photographer and a venue and a dress and flowers is fun because you're not constantly worried about how much it's going to cost. You know you have enough money to cover your top priorities. It doesn't matter if it's going to look like the wedding you saw on TikTok or Instagram this morning. You know that that is not important. This is where you can confidently invest in your priorities, tune out, and say no to the stuff that's not that important to you. And you're not even going to recognize that person who was alone and crying with their dog because everything was just too expensive and too overwhelming. And with that, let's dive into today's wedding budget Q&A. Our first question, hey Cara, just diving into the Vault membership package and wanted to say thank you so much for this wonderful resource. We're newly engaged since Thanksgiving of 2021 and planning a wedding with a $25,000 to $30,000 budget for spring of 2023. I'm feeling pressured to start making vendor decisions since we live in Chicago area where the best seem to already be booked for 2023 dates. What advice do you have for finding the best photographer, venue, and caterer for our money? Welcome to the vault, and thank you so much for your question. It's a great one, and I have a good answer for you. I review all the perks and benefits of attending a wedding fair or a bridal expo, as these are sometimes called, and I know for a fact that there are multiple wedding fairs, bridal expos, wedding shows that happen in the Chicago area throughout the year. So my first number one piece of advice would be to do some research and find a couple of those that you can attend in person, and then be sure to visit that full-length episode for all the details on how you can take advantage of meeting vendors face to face and a bunch of scripts, if you will, um, written scripts that you can use as you're having conversations with these vendors to not only maximize your time spent with them, but also to maximize your budget and to get the most for your money as you're choosing vendors like a photographer, a caterer, a venue, etc. Now, if you're listening to this Q&A episode on the public podcast feed, then great news for you as well. That Wedding Fair Bridal Expo episode is available for free, uh, and it's dated December 1st of 2021. So be sure to go back and take a listen to that. Again, there's a ton of great information within that show on how to maximize your budget as you're interviewing vendors at a fair. Now, my second piece of advice to you for finding the best venue and vendors for your money is that you will always want to prioritize. It doesn't sound very earth shattering or groundbreaking, but I will say again and again that having your priorities dialed in is the number one way to make sure that you stay on budget and that you get most of the things you want out of your wedding celebration. It's really that simple. Now, if you have taken advantage of our free engagement starter kit bonus series, you may remember a story from one of those bonus shows, and it's about a bride and a groom who were following a wedding checklist, and that checklist told them to get their flowers in order and to hire a professional florist to provide the endless amounts of flowers that are, quote, suggested or recommended to have for your wedding ceremony, your reception, your wedding party, etc. 
So anyway, in a nutshell, this couple went ahead and spent $5,000 on flowers because they were mindlessly following a wedding checklist instead of following their personal priorities. And the ending of that story is that after their wedding, they both really regretted spending any money on flowers whatsoever because flowers weren't even that important to them in the first place. Had they had that dialed in conversation about their priorities at the beginning of their engagement as they were formulating their budget, they could have put that $5,000 towards any other number of things that actually were important to them. So the tactical strategic answer to your question is check out that episode dated December 1st on attending a wedding fair or a bridal expo. And then the second part of my answer is to always be prioritizing. And that's an ongoing process throughout your engagement that I take couples through in great detail within our membership area. And our second question for today's Ask Me Anything wedding budget Q&A show, can you go into more detail on the budget conversation with our parents? In the wedding budget workshop last week, you mentioned talking to our parents separately. This seems like it should be something we approach as a team. Thank you so much for your question. And yes, in the episode from last week on setting your wedding budget, My humble opinion is that the wedding budget conversation with your parents goes smoothest when you are each speaking separately to your own parents. Now, some keywords in there. My humble opinion does not need to be what you end up doing. I say again and again and again throughout all of our conversations, I can give you a suggestion and I can give you what has worked best for me personally, but I can never know your individual circumstances, your relationship to your parents, your relationship to your partner. Those are all, of course, very, very personal things. So please, by all means, follow what feels comfortable to you. Take what I suggest as a guideline only, and if you're feeling um, really pulled in another direction, then that's totally fine. There are absolutely no hard and fast rules around here, and you always have my blessing to follow your heart and what you feel like is best for you in your situation. And in this case, if you and your partner feel most comfortable sitting down together and having a budget and a money conversation with your parents, then please, by all means, go that route. Okay, budget question number three. Do you have any advice or favorite resources for trying to save as much money as possible on decorations? Pinterest really overwhelms me and I'm not into researching a million DIYs. Another great question. Thank you so much for this. I have a three-part answer for you. So first off, my best advice to anyone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money on decorations for the wedding reception and or ceremony is to choose a beautiful venue. Choose a naturally beautiful venue that needs very little by way of extra decorations. And I'm going to stop there as a little cliffhanger Because coming up in just a couple of days on January 19th, we're going to talk all about researching and shopping for your perfect wedding venue. And this is something that we'll touch on much more in that episode. So I'm going to leave it at that. My next piece of advice for you on trying to save money on decorations is to, first of all, really think about your priorities. And then anything that doesn't fall within that list of your priorities, you should let it go. Just by the way that your question is worded, I'm kind of feeling that decorations are really not a priority to you. And if that's the case, then go back to my last piece of advice, which is to choose an absolutely beautiful venue that's ready to go as is, and then let go of the rest. You don't have to have a ton of decorations. My goodness, if you look at a wedding planning checklist, the amount of decor that will be on that checklist is absolutely mind-blowing. Now, don't get me wrong. 
if having a bunch of beautiful, elaborate decorations is a priority to you, then that is totally fine. But again, I'm kind of reading be between the lines here a little bit, and it doesn't feel to me like decor and big oversized and overpriced and wow decorations are really a big priority to you. So if that's the case, then let it go. The best way always in all cases of any wedding planning scenario out there, the best way to save money on it is to skip it. <laughs> skip it and let it go. Not only do you save money doing it that way, you actually don't spend any money at all, which is even better. And then my third piece of advice to you is more of the gray area. So let's say you're not into big, elaborate, expensive decorations, but you want to have something. So it's not an all or nothing. We can live in the middle there. Uh, you mentioned that Pinterest is overwhelming and you're not wanting to research a million DIY projects. That is a great thing to delegate to your family and your friends. I hear from engaged couples all the time who have well-meaning friends and family and loved ones who want to help with the wedding and they are begging, can you please give us a job to do or please let us know what we can help you with? Decorations is a perfect thing to delegate to those people who are wanting to help you. Your best friend and your cousin and your future sister-in-law might be loving Pinterest and they want to do all the DIY projects. So don't be shy about asking for help on something like de decorations. And of course, that's not the only thing you can delegate to your friends, but it is a perfect example that fit really well with your question. And then our last wedding budget themed question for today, is there a certain percentage that we should add on for all the little things that you don't think about? This is a wonderful question and it wins for the most popular question of the past week. It came in multiple times from multiple couples. For my vault members, you'll find a list of the top 10 wedding expenses that get overlooked attached as a bonus PDF to this audio episode. So log into the vault, look for this episode, and attached to that, you'll find a PDF with all the things that couples tend to forget when they're formulating their budget. Now, I'll say here that probably the most common cause of a busted wedding budget or going over budget is when couples forget to account for everything up front. And then they're being confronted by these surprise expenses along the way. I think you'll be really, really surprised by what most couples forget to include in their initial budget calculations. But please don't go into your wedding budgeting adventure with a generic wedding checklist as your guide. That's a mistake. Remember the couple who spent $5,000 on flowers because they were following a checklist instead of their priorities. Only you know what your wedding priorities are, not a freebie checklist that you found on a big wedding website or you pulled off Pinterest. I know that it's a balancing act and there's on one hand what you actually want and then there's what you think you need, and then there's what your mom wants, and then there's what the 27 other couples in the wedding chat room say that you should want. It's really, really easy to get torn in a million different directions, but the good news is that by being proactive and by being very intentional and thorough and giving yourself some cushion money, a busted wedding budget does not have to happen to you. There are hundreds of engaged couples who have said goodbye to wedding budget stress and overwhelm. And there are a ton of couples out there who have the keys to a carefree, a confident and a joyful engagement season. And you can have it too with membership to my digital wedding planning package, The Vault. Sign up today and enjoy a free three-day trial, no contract, no obligation, and a 30-day money-back guarantee, and all the details are at wedpodcast.com. 
Coming up on Wednesday in just two days, I have an essential workshop style guide to researching and shopping for your perfect wedding venue. I can't wait and we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much for joining me this week in the 12 weeks of engagement season bonus series from the Wedding Planning Podcast. To access any worksheets, checklists, or additional activities mentioned in today's episode, visit wedpodcast.com and sign up for a free zero obligation three-day trial of my revolutionary digital wedding planning package, The Vault. Take advantage of the lowest membership price of the year when you sign up today at wedpodcast.com. I'll see you there.